Welcome back, crew. Today, we are diving into the Dagger Heart system and we'll be building a character utilizing their latest playtest, taking you through step by step through their creation process and showing you how everything works. So, you'll feel a little bit more familiar with the Dagger Heart concept for character creation uh, and feel comfortable building your own PC as well if you'd like to. Uh, before we dive into that, I do want to give a shout out. This is part of our new series where we're comparing. 2025's big three tabletop RPG releases. It's going to be a crazy year because there's a lot of tabletop RPGs with huge fandoms coming out all the same year. We've got Daggerheart by the Critical Role crew. Uh, we've got the MCDM RPG, Draw Steel. Uh, and we also have uh, the Cosm Cosmere RPG by Brandon Sanderson. Uh, so with this, we're doing, we're going to build a PC for each system. I was able to play test each system as well. Uh, and once we build the PCs, we're going to do a big comparison video, uh, kind of going through the pros and cons, the roses and thorns of each system, and which type of player will be really well suited for it. Uh, because I think this is a really exciting time, because th these are huge... Uh, these systems have huge fandoms and huge followings behind them. I think this could be a great time to get more people into diversified RPGs outside of just uh, the shadow of 5e. So really looking forward to that. But let's dive into building our Dagger RPC. So with this, big shout out to Demiplane. Uh, if they have it, all the playtest rules as well as the character creation on their site for free. Uh, you could go through and just register and then build some PCs, which is what we did today. Uh, with this too, uh, so just a little heads up for the, the Daggerheart RPG. Uh, the easy character creation. Uh, it's like a kind of in between like the PBTA style games and 5e. So there's definitely some character options and cool stuff you get to pick in and customize out your PC. But it's not one where you're going to be kind of struggling over for hours to build your PC and looking up a whole bunch of different mechanics. Uh, fairly straightforward in that regard with some cool narrative options. Uh, so let's dive in. We're going to be building a uh, PC Apollo. Uh, he's going to be a, a guy and we're going to, we want him, I wanted him to be kind of a religious figure that's able to channel, uh, kind of divine magic and lightning a little bit, uh, as well as be able to fight on the front lines. So we're going to see how well we can get to that concept utilizing the system. So we've got our names, uh, selected. The next piece we're going to go to is building out our class. Uh, so this system has a range of classes, I think. Under 12, uh, but a lot of the usual staples that you'd expect, the bard, warrior, wizard, druid, ranger, rogue, uh, a lot of that cool stuff. Uh, but they also have one that's unique to the system, which is almost like a cleric paladin blend, the seraph. Uh, so that's what we're going to be going through today. Uh, that's going to be our PC to start this off with. Uh, and you'll notice, too, that you get a lot of starting pieces from your class. So our guy, uh, Apollo, uh, he gets a starting evasion score of 7. That comes directly from his class. Uh, we get the Splendor and Valor domains. We're going to go into what those domains are a little bit later. They're kind of a special. Uh, the domains give you special abilities that you can pick on level ups and character creation. And we'll point that out when we get to it. Uh, it also gives you your damage thresholds, uh, as well as your spell casting trait once we get into our subclass. Uh, so we've got that all picked out there. Uh, we see all the cool stuff that we get with this. Uh, now we're going to get go through and pick our subclass. Uh, so there's two subclasses currently or for the playtest with the Seraph. Uh, you got the Divine uh, Wielder, which is like this winged uh, angel who kind of fly around the battlefield doing crazy. Uh, or sorry, the Winged Sentinel, which is the one that you can kind of go through and fly around the battlefield doing crazy stuff. Uh, and then you've got the Divine Wielder, uh, who is able to kind of have like this magic weapon that he can throw and recall, almost like Thor's hammer, uh, a little bit. So I wanted to play that. I thought for our guy being lightning themed, that's going to fit. Uh, except I want to do a spear versus a hammer. Uh, so we'll see the Divine Wielder. Uh, if you click on it as well, it shows you some of the cool stuff that you get with that, uh, including that spirit weapon uh, option I mentioned as well. So we've got that uh, picked out. Let's move on to the next piece. Uh, so with that, you're going to go through and figure out your traits. The way this system does it, it's very similar. You've got six stats, kind of from uh, strength all the way down to knowledge. Uh, and what we're going to do is pick out the traits that fit for our guy. Uh, you get four options you can make with this. You get one plus two, you can allocate. You get two plus ones, and then you have one minus one. So for our guy, uh, he is going to be on the front lines. We want him to be able to wield uh, kind of martial weapons and do so well. So we're going to give him strength plus two. 
we also want to be able to uh, kind of uh, have some instincts and be uh, with uh, being almost the uh, paladin. You want him to have a certain level of presence as well. Uh, and instincts is kind of like your perception for this system. Uh, presence more like your charisma. So we're gonna put the our two points into those ones, or one one two one points into those ones. Uh, and then we also have a minus one. Knowledge isn't going to be our strong suit, so we're going to take that minus one there. And then we've got our stat output. We've got zero uh, in our uh, agility and finesse. But we then we have two in strength, one in instinct, one in presence, minus one in knowledge. Pretty straightforward there. Now that we have that, we're going to be able to select our weapons for our guy. Uh, so I'm going to go, go through and we pick a spear, which is one of the primary martial weapons. Uh, and you get one primary, one secondary. Uh, the spear in this one is two-handed and gives you reach, going to be able to attack foes both in melee range as well as very close. We'll have a whole video later on the mechanics of the system, kind of going into what the difference is between melee, very close, uh, and the other distance ranks. Uh, but this gives us a little bit of a leeway with being able to attack things far away from us. I think it really fits the uh, spirit weapon flavor. Uh, and we're also, for the second one, I thought uh, I just wanted to have something to mix it up and went with a hand crossbow. Uh, since it gives us some range in case it's too far for our spear throw to work, uh, it just gives us some other options. Especially since it's two-handed, we wouldn't need a shield or any of the other weapon options that come through. Now we get starting armor. Armor is really cool in the system. It does something that I really appreciate. I even when I back in when I ran 5e, I had a variant rule that did something similar, uh, but different application. Uh, so rather than your armor making you harder to hit, your armor was going to absorb damage. Uh, and basically you'll have boxes on your character sheet where you can cross off whenever you utilize an armor point to absorb your damage. So for this, you see there's got a number of different options there uh, for what you can pick. Uh, and how much of a damage reduction you'll get. So you see with ours, um, I went with the leather armor. Um, I wanted something because my guy's evasion isn't great, but it's not terrible. So I didn't want to go with the leather armor they recommended in bump evasion. I wanted to have a little bit extra damage reduction when we called that in. Uh, and then evasion too, for anybody that's curious, evasion is kind of what your AC typically is. So it's how hard you are to hit. So for this, we'd have a, a, a AC or evasion of seven, uh, damage reduction of four every time we spent an armor point. And your armor can break if you spend too many points. So we've got that. Uh, we get some starting inventory options. Uh, so I picked a sigil of my god. I thought that'd be cool. And for our guy, we'll flavor it out as he's got like this little lightning ch lightning bolt chain uh, or chain with a lightning bolt at the end of it, uh, kind of made out of silver. Just kind of fits his god being a little lightning inspiration uh, and you also get to pick between a health potion or a stamina potion uh, with this system you have hp as well as stress uh, so the stamina potion would help out on the stress side hp or health potion would help out on the hp side now we're going to get into our domain cards so these ones are cool so as i mentioned before uh the domains are what give you cool abilities that you can bust out uh like most magic like options and the nice thing is it's not just a seraph that gets these the warrior the rogue the ranger all get their own domains and you get to pick different options from these uh, and if you get to play in person they actually have little cards too that you can kind of like utilize to reference these abilities uh, so for our guy, I wanted him to be uh, able to conjure some magic, uh, able to throw energy at his opponents. So I picked the Volt Vegan, uh, which kind of fits his flavor on that side. Uh, and then just to be kind of cliche paladin, I picked the heal Mending Touch, which is kind of like Lay on Hands. Uh, and then both of those are from the Splendor domain. Uh, but you'll see we also had options from the Valor. Um, I almost picked Forceful Push. That Fits them as well, too. But I thought I wanted to go play up the holy side of the PC. So we've got our class selected. Now we're going to move on to our heritage. And then if you'll notice, too, if you go from the character creation tool on Demiplane versus the uh, playtest character build guidelines, they're in a slightly different order. Typically, uh, and the first one thing that you do in the character and like the playtest guidelines is you pick your class and you pick your heritage and you pick some of the other features. Uh, but this just goes in a little bit different order. You can do it much either way. So now that we've got that, we're going to pick our class, our heritage. They've got a number of different ones. Um, I went with the uh, Dracona. 
uh, which is like their Dragonborn. And uh, for anybody that's played with me, I love Dragonborn, so I went with that. Uh, with your heritage, it doesn't affect your stats at all, so your traits aren't going to change. What it's going to do is give you different ancestry features that you can bring to bear uh, and do something cool with them, fitting to your ancestry. So for our Dragonborn or our Dracona, uh, you get an elemental breath weapon. Uh, the nice thing too is you get to flavor what that element looks like. So I said lightning, uh, so you can just exhale a torrent of lightning. So one of the interesting things they do here too is you get to pick kind of like your background, kind of where you came from or kind of how you fit into society. So you've got things like high board, low board, uh, order board, all of these different things uh, that kind of give you a little bit of a picture of what your experiences were before joining this adventure. So we picked high born uh, and they all, all give you a feature or trait that you can bust out. So for my guy, I get a bonus when negotiating or uh, speaking with nobles uh, about different things due to my background and how I've integrated into society. Pretty cool on that side. So we've got that in, we've got our class, we've got our heritage. Uh, now we're gonna go through and build our experiences and build out what our character looks like. Uh, so with this, uh, so this system is very narrative too. So a lot of things like kind of from like the PBTA style where you get to ask like background questions for your own PC, uh, as well as different ways to connect yourself to your party. Um, we're gonna go through those sections pretty quick since we're building that on our own. But I wanted our guy to have black and silver armor uh, that almost crackles with light and energy. Uh, we've got golden uh, eyes with our scales being gold, uh, gold as well. Uh, just some things to help us stand out. Uh, and then we get our background questions. If I was going through a campaign, we'd want to figure out uh, kind of who our god is, how we serve them, um, how does your old player character uh, change or your appearance change after taking your oath, uh, and in what strange or unique way do you pray to your god? So all really cool things for helping you flesh out your character uh, in the space and just making sure that you're kind of integrating them into the world and kind of having your own vision even just strengthened of what your character is. So now experience is another one of the cool mechanics here. Uh, so this system, uh, if you want to check out one of our prior videos, I'll throw a link here too uh, for dagger hurt coverage on the mechanics. But whenever you roll, you roll 2d12, one hope fear, uh, you add them together. Typically you don't have many modifiers outside of your traits that you add in, but your experience can be utilized at certain times. The nice thing is it's very open-ended for what your experience will be. Uh, and open-ended in a way to help you flesh out your character, not open-ended in a way, hopefully, where you try to gamify it. Uh, but you get to pick two experiences or two points of experience that you've had. Uh, usually, they kind of frame them as different jobs or different things you may have done. So for our guy, in the past, before he swore his oath to his god, he was just a simple soldier. Uh, so things that may relate to military service or warfare or tactics may be able to, uh, with GM discretion, allow us to put our plus two modifier on them. And that's another point, too, is you get to pick two of these. They'll each have a plus two modifier uh, that you add to your dice roll when they apply. The other one, uh, we're going to go with Cleric of the Storm. Uh, it's whatever our god or religion pieces may play, we may get to add that plus two in as well. And we're not going to do this as we don't have any other characters we're building with, but I like these. Uh, these are kind of similar to some of the PBTA or even Forge the Dark style games. Uh, as you get to go through and look at the other player characters and ask them some questions to start to build out your connections to the party. Uh, so one of them is, uh, what did you? What promise did you make me agree to should you die on the battlefield? So just cool things that help you flesh out your party, make them feel like a group of people that know each other, kind of like living, breathing people, which I always enjoy. Uh, and then, last big thing is if you wanted to, you could level up, uh, but you built your character. Uh, and the nice thing with Demiplay is you go through, click on your character sheet, and you'll see all the cool stuff that you have in there. Uh, so you'll see our seven evasion, our four armor reduction. You'll see the armor slots we've got. We've got six slots that we can utilize to burn, uh, to reduce damage. You'll see our traits there, uh, the major and minor, or minor, major, and severe damage thresholds. And that's kind of a cool point that I'll do a point out a little bit. Uh, so when you see damage coming in, uh, you may kind of worry that it's going to take you down in one blow. Uh, but the way it works in the system is you're going to look at this chart to see where, what type of damage you'll take depending on their roll. Uh, so somebody said uh, nine or below damage, you would just mark one HP. Uh, if somebody did to you between uh, 
10 and 16, uh, you're going to mark 2 HP. 17 plus, you mark 3 HP. So fairly straightforward, uh, but it's a little bit different than some people are used to. Uh, but you see that we've got our PC very easy. As I said, this one's a very narrative system uh, with some strong mechanics backing it up. So it's not one that you're going to have to kind of go through and flip between pages forever and ever to make sure your character is built right. You can go and build them uh, and have a good idea of who your character is in the narrative and then tie them to your party too. So you have a good idea of who your party is and what brought you all together, which is a really cool thing. Yeah, but overall, thank you guys for hanging out. Uh, definitely shout in the comments some of your things, uh, favorite pieces you like about the Daggerheart character system. Uh, and definitely stay tuned. We are going to be diving into uh, the MCDM RPG Draw Steals character creation system next uh, as we compare kind of the, the big three juggernauts that are coming out in the TTRPG space in 2025. Uh, and shout out, they've all got playtests uh, that you can go through and ch uh, check out and form your own opinions on the system as well. Well, yeah, like, comment, let us know what you like on that system, uh, and stay tuned as we dive in more. But thanks for hanging out.